wake up to reality. Life is a battlefield and every day is a new battle. Whether it's in a business, relationships or personal growth, it's a constant and ever-changing war that requires you to be prepared and adaptable at all times. And just like in any war, the key to victory lies in your ability to outmaneuver and outthink your opponent. You see, we all have to compete in this world, and if you pretend to be too morally correct for competition, your goals and dreams will simply be taken away by another man. There's always someone out there that would gladly take your future wife or the income you have away from you. He may even be lurking at this very moment, waiting for you to slack off and let your guard down. So one must be prepared at all times and never get complacent. And remember, if you're a true warrior, competition doesn't scare you. It makes you better. The Art of War is one of the greatest books that can help you win the battles of life. These lessons aren't just for soldiers on a physical battlefield, but for anyone who wants to be successful in their endeavors. So pay attention, because I'm going to help you get the upper hand in any situation. Lesson 1. Know your enemy and know yourself. When Sun Shu said know your enemy and know yourself, he was emphasizing the importance of knowing both your strengths and weaknesses, as well as your opponents. Most people don't understand themselves, nor do they understand their opponent, and that is why they constantly lose in life. The reality is, if you do not know yourself, you don't know anything. You're just a product of your environment. At the same time, if you do know yourself, but not your opponent, you will lose as often as you win, because the outcome is unpredictable. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. So learn to understand both yourself and the enemy. Who are you and what is it you want? Be honest with yourself about your limitations. What are your weaknesses and areas of improvement? By understanding your own limitations, you can develop strategies to overcome them and leverage your strengths to your advantage. Now, when it comes to your enemy, you must learn to understand him better than he understands himself. What is his main objective? What are his traits, his habits, and biases? Analyze everything. What angers him? And how does he act when he becomes emotional? Look for patterns that he himself does not even know about. Only after learning as much as possible about him will you start to see his strengths and weaknesses. And one of the most effective ways to defeat an enemy is to strike at their weakness. As Sun Shu famously wrote, In war, the way is to avoid what is strong and strike what is weak. Lesson 2. Attack with Precision and Strategy Victory in war is not about the level of destruction you create. Instead, the goal of war is to take your enemy out as efficiently and effectively as possible. This requires strategy. The general who wins the battle makes many calculations in his tempo before the battle is fought. The general who loses makes but few. This means every battle is won long before it is fought. Always calculate the risk of your actions and whether or not the risks outweigh the benefits of your actions. And be strategic and precise about your moves. But also make sure to never neglect the enemy's plan of action. Because in war, what is of supreme importance is to attack the enemy's strategy. Lesson 3. Adapt your plans and strategy. There is no such thing as a perfect plan because circumstances can change. This means you should not get biased and stuck on one specific plan or strategy. Instead, one should adapt their strategy to the specific circumstances they face in order to maximize their chances of success. This means that it's important to stay flexible and open-minded in the face of changing circumstances and be willing to adjust your tactics accordingly when necessary. Remember, 
A master plan turns into a garbage plan when all the circumstances around it have changed. And not changing your plan in time will get you destroyed. Lesson 4. Avoid Direct Conflict There are times where you must ruthlessly attack your opponent. For example, when he is taking his ease or is recovering, that is when you must give him no rest. However, sometimes it's better to win without fighting. This means you avoid conflict from taking place. This does not make you weak or scared. Even the strongest animal would avoid a battle that's not worth fighting. There are many reasons why you want to avoid direct conflict. It could be because your enemy is too strong to take on at the moment, or because you don't want to waste time, energy, and resources on a battle that can easily be avoided. Or maybe because you found a way to destroy the enemy without having to face him in direct battle. One of the tactics Sun Shu recommends for achieving victory without direct conflict is the use of deception. By misdirecting your opponent or presenting false information, you can gain the upper hand and achieve your objectives without risking direct confrontation. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. There are many situations where it's best to avoid direct conflict, so always keep your main objective in mind before going to battle. Lesson 5. Emotions have no place in war. It is the unemotional, reserved, calm, detached warrior who wins. Not the hothead seeking vengeance and not the ambitious seeker of fortune. There are two things I have always mentioned on this channel. One is the importance of emotional control. The second is the importance of detachment. Emotional control is important because emotions are a source of energy. When not controlled, they quickly become self-destructive. But controlled, they can be extremely powerful. However, when it comes to any kind of strategy, emotions simply have no place in it. You must never act out of emotions. Regardless of how strong your emotions may flow at the time, never snap. Instead, detach from your emotions and look at why you are feeling this way and how it can be used against you. You see, in any form of mind game, whether it's in business, war, or life in general, the point is to trigger emotion in the other person. The one who gets emotional loses the war. This is something that can also be used to your advantage. If you know your enemy is quick to anger, seek to irritate him. And if your enemy is quick to get big-headed, pretend to be weak, so he may grow in arrogance. These are powerful tactics to make your opponent act out of emotions and play into your hand. It can be used to catch him off guard. Thus, the expert in battle moves the enemy and is not moved by him. Lesson 6. Never get complacent. In the arena of conflict, there is no greater danger than complacency. There is a quote that goes, Never scorn the weak cub. He may become the brutal tiger. The foe who is underestimated, who is viewed as a minor inconvenience, can become the greatest threat of all. And the overconfident warrior, who fails to exercise forethought and does not consider the strength of his opponents, will surely fall into their grasp. Lesson 7. Take advantage of chaos. In the midst of chaos, there is opportunity. Even in the darkest time of our life, we should find the ray of hope. We need to remain calm and keep a sharp eye around for any unnecessary changes. A good example of this is a crash in the market. While everyone is panicking, you must remain sharp and seize opportunities. It's the perfect time to strike and make the right investments. Lesson 8. Build Strong Relationships Sun Shu recognized the importance of building strong relationships with allies and potential allies. Most people pick friends based on nothing. Just because they share some habits together, like playing video games or engaging in the same activities. 
instead of trivial friendships. Seek out those friends to whom you can turn in times of need. Those who will stand by us through thick and thin. Honesty and integrity are essential to building trust and establishing strong relationships. Meaning, you stay real and even open up some of your weaknesses to others. Now, I understand it can be challenging to expose our vulnerabilities and weaknesses to others, fearing that it may expose our flaws or unworthiness. But in doing so, we open ourselves up to the strength, healing, and wisdom that comes from leaning on our friends. Listen. The art of making friends and influencing people is a valuable skill that we should all strive to master. And if you are fortunate enough to experience true friendship, you will know firsthand the unparalleled value and fulfillment that it brings. To be surrounded by friends and brothers that would go to war and back for you is truly powerful. Lastly, Taking a real friend for granted is like ignoring a valuable investment until it loses all value. We may start to assume that our friends will always be there for us without realizing the time and effort they put into the relationship. It is crucial to acknowledge the value of our friendships and show appreciation for the people in our lives who support and uplift us. By the way, if you want to level up in life, don't forget to show some love by hitting the like and subscribe button. Until next time.